My whole life, I've always loved the in-between places. If there's a dark patch of woods where nobody ever goes, I want to explore it. If there's an old stone foundation, I want to check it out. Even abandoned buildings are exciting to me. These are spots where people dump garbage, where they tell their kids not to play. And for some reason, I have to go poking around. It's also what I love about living in Cleveland. This old industrial city has all kinds of abandoned stuff to explore. Except I'm not in Cleveland. I'm in Connecticut. What am I doing here? That's a longer story. You know what? Let's start over. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut. I'm not going to say which one. I spent most of my childhood playing in these woods. Hiking, fishing, building forts, usual small town kid stuff. When people think of Connecticut, they probably think of golf courses and big houses. And yeah, fair enough. But I always loved the places you drove through on the way to those destinations. I was the kid staring out the car window, watching the woods whip by and looking for trails and streams that I could sneak back to later. I'm sure Connecticut seems like one huge country club, but it's also one of the original 13 colonies, a hot spot of the American Revolution and a major industrial center. Long before we chopped up all the farms and turned them into suburbs, the state was filled with mills and factories. And all that stuff didn't disappear, it just got abandoned. And then the woods grew up around it, and honestly, most people forgot about it. I grew up here, and no one talked about Connecticut as a technological innovator or a manufacturing powerhouse, but it was both. Hell, the Stanley hand planes I use every day were made in New Britain, just 40 minutes from where I grew up. I didn't learn that until I was living in California. Growing up, I might come across an old foundation, a rusted car frame, or a weird piece of concrete out in the woods, but I didn't give it much thought. I was a kid, and it was all just old stuff. But I haven't lived in this state for almost 20 years, and coming back now gives me fresh eyes. I can see things that were invisible when I saw them every day. Some of the spots where I played were actually important pieces of history, and some of them deserve a second look. If you think of America's history of mining, you probably think of coal in West Virginia or gold in California, but most parts of the country had some valuable mineral. Connecticut had mica. Most people have never heard of it, but mica is all around you. It's a clear, flaky silicate. It resists water and electricity, so it's got a million uses. Mica is the sparkle in lots of makeup and paints. It's used as a filler in drywall and other parts of your house. It's a natural insulator, so it's made into electrical components. It's in your smartphone, so you probably have a little bit of mica in your pocket. Native Americans used mica for decorative and artistic uses, but going back to the 18th century, mica was mined for a more important reason. It's clear, and it has an incredibly high melting point. For over 200 years, mica has been used to make windows in stoves and furnaces. It can withstand temperatures that would turn glass into a puddle, and it allowed people to see inside super hot places. You can imagine how useful this was during the Industrial Revolution, when people needed to see into all kinds of high-temperature environments. So mica is valuable, and sleepy little Connecticut had a lot of it. When I was growing up, I heard stories about the old mine up in the woods. They said people dug big crystals from the side of the trail and brought home flakes of mica the size of dinner plates. I never saw any of these things. It's just stuff that people said. This was the early 90s, so no internet and no GPS. My dad and I asked around for a long time before we found someone who drew us a map on notebook paper. I've still got it somewhere. My dad and I first hiked up to the mine when I was 12. I remember being really excited. It was the kind of thing you would do on a school field trip, and I was going to see it with my dad. I've lived all over America, and nothing is quite like the woods of New England. They've got a mysterious quality. Dark without being creepy. It's hard to explain, but there's a feeling I get when I walk through these woods. I still get it. 
And if you're looking for an old mine or some old farmhouse, you might get so focused on finding that thing that you don't even notice the amazing landscape around you. You actually might miss the forest for the trees. Off the side of the trail is this rock formation, just sitting there like a pile of potatoes. You can hike right past it, but this mass of rock is cracked and split in dozens of places. And seeping out through those splits is a tiny little spring. It comes out of the rock all summer long. Even when it hasn't rained for months, this little pool is still here. And these rocks are hiding something else. These sparkly black things are called tourmaline. It's a gemstone, and the black color comes from iron in the crystals. It's another sign that this area is rich in minerals. I think these are the crystals that I used to hear rumors about, and I've been all over these woods, and this is the only place I've seen these crystals. This rock formation is only about halfway to the mine, so I have a lot of ground to cover. You'd miss it if you weren't looking, but any place there's a little washout from the rain, you see a white sparkle. I'm getting close. When you're right up on the lip of the mine, the trail just suddenly turns milk white. The mica is mixed up with quartz and feldspar, and the three minerals together make colors you just don't see in these woods. And then you get over the crest, and I've been here dozens of times, but it still gets my attention. The outskirts of the mine is all piles of cast off rock. This is the stuff they didn't take when they mined out the mica. Over time, the forest moved back in, and now there are trees popping up all over. It's a crazy landscape, but it's not even close to the mine itself. The main site is a pair of massive trenches hacked right out of the bedrock. The walls are 20 feet high, and being down inside feels like being underground. The rock still has big chunks of mica and quartz in it, and everything sparkles if the light catches it right. At the bottom, I finally find some real samples of mica. When I was a kid, you'd find little chips of mica in the dirt, but nothing like this. If the miners left stuff like this behind, the pieces they took out must have been huge. The end of the pit is a steep climb, and all the rocks are slippery with moss. This was all easier when I was a teenager. Being deep in the woods is still an adventure, but there's nobody else around if something goes wrong. This is the pit that I just climbed out of. There's a narrow bridge of rock where I'm standing, and then it drops straight down into a deeper and longer pit. It's like a huge hand came in and scooped something out of the earth. I could climb down, but the view from the edge is even better. You get a real sense of how deep they dug and how hard it must have been to get the mica out. This mine was mostly active in the late 1800s, so a lot of the mining was done by hand, and a lot of the minerals were taken out in donkey carts over dirt roads. The work must have been savage. At the far end of this second pit, there's a hillside covered with waste rock. This is where they dumped the biggest pieces, and the ground is so rocky, nothing grows. I've been here in the afternoon, and when the sun hits the hillside, it's blinding. This is the best spot for samples, and even a hundred years of hikers and rock hounds hasn't made a dent in all the beautiful rocks just sitting on the ground. This mine is better preserved than a lot of others. It's pretty far off the beaten track, and people hike up here, but not a lot. It mostly gets left alone. When I was younger, I always took pieces of mica and quartz home with me, but I don't do that anymore. I just leave it alone. It's better that way. I bet some people would want to come see this mine for themselves, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. The mine is on public land, but I had to cross private property to get to it. I have permission, but the people who own houses around here really don't want folks crossing their land to get to this mine. Besides, the mine is only special if you decide it's special. In my town, people know it's up here, but they don't care. It's just the old mica mine, and people ignore it. Instead of looking for this place, look around your town. I've lived all over America, and every place is special and interesting. Every place has history. You just need to see it with fresh eyes. I left Connecticut almost 20 years ago, and coming back lets me see the place all over again. The boring landscape of my hometown is 
bursting with weird places and little mysteries. Wherever you are, there are things like that to find. You just have to decide to be interested. I'm trying to do that everywhere I go. I've been hiking in these woods for 30 years, but I've only seen a fraction of what's up here. If I go looking, I'm sure I'll find the next thing. It's out there. Just waiting for someone to notice.